Hello guys, welcome back to my class. In these lessons, I'm going to show you how to run your own functions, or how to customize your own functions or modules. Before this, what is functions? A function basically is a block of organized, reusable code that is used to perform a single and related actions. Now, let's reflect the previous lesson in uh, lesson 7, which is predefined functions. We have learned like, for instance, it's alpha. Each digit to check whether the letter is alphabet or not right whether uh, if you use each digit whether to check the letter is digit or not you use strcmp to compare two strings you use rand random to generate random number for the user as you can see here the similarity for all these functions is just to perform or they in charge only a single task each of them has a unique purpose they won't disturb each other and in fact each of these predefined function has its own source code it was written by a programmer and built into this c++ environment however we don't really need to know how the programmer write the source code or the pre uh, these predefined functions as long as you know when and how to uh, use them how to perform them okay now i give you a situation just like if you are hungry and going to a restaurant to order some food. Do you need to know what is the making process of your food? No. Basically, you just need to know where you need to go when you are hungry and how to order your food. Then the rest of the job, just leave it to the staff behind the restaurant to process for you. Then at the end of this uh, ordering, you will get the food and then you just leave the restaurant. But the disadvantage of this ready-made food is you have to accept whatever taste of the food that you order and the portion of the particular food you have no choice because you are not the one who making the food okay so maybe the food now you order is not really your type it's not suit your taste bud so now you decided to make your own meal which is burger one of my favorite food here okay so now you want to make the burger you need to buy the ingredients such as the cabbage, a pineapple, meat, bun, cheese, and all this. And all these ingredients actually serves its own purpose. Then you have to follow the own recipe. And you have to grill the uh, meat and then wash the cabbage and then wrap and so on. And then finally you make your own delicious burger. Okay, we call it as customization. You customize your own burger. Here, you can think of that ready-made food here is actually a predefined function that is available in the C++ environment. And the user-defined function is basically like the handmade burger. You can customize your own recipe. Okay, but however, the bad thing about the user-defined functions is it takes longer time. Okay, and also you may have this uh, possibility to have uh, produced the wrong result using the predefined function due to this uh, wrong step in your recipe due to the human mistake and so on and therefore you need to spend a lot of time to debug and find the bug in your functions okay so i hope you are clear now what is the predefined function and user defined functions so why functions the good thing about this function are they are easy to manage compared to that you squeeze everything process uh, calculations input validations and all the coding inside the main functions also is reusable all right because each of this module or function is independent so in future if let's say you would like to develop an almost similar program then some of this function in the past system may be applicable for the current program then you can just uh, reuse the code all right so it is also used to uh, protect the data and easy to debug since each of these module in charge uh, its own task. Alright, so in the rest of these lessons, I'm going to show you uh, how to define your own functions, the syntax and some mistakes that a programmer always uh, make. Okay, so that you can try to avoid to making the same mistake in future. Okay, so before we start to write the functions, here are some rules that you have to always remember. Each of the functions contribute only one task. Okay, each function will take it 
of their own responsibility. Okay, second, each function consists only a single entry and single exit. Third one, always rename or give a good name to your functions. Okay, how to define good? As long as it is meaningful and not too short or not too long. Just like a name that you give to a variable that I show you in the chapter 2. Alright, and also each of the function may or may not return a value. I will show more uh, I'll show you in more detail later. Okay, and the most important thing here is uh, always represent or plan your work with this structure chart. Show the relationship among all the functions or the modules. Okay, now I will show you how to write a user defined function in just four steps. Okay, given these simple situations, look at these questions. Okay, you are going to develop a simple calculation system that includes two modules, add and multiplication modules. And here are the requirements. In main functions, user uh, is required to provide two values. Okay, means that this system is going to read two values from the user. And then these two uh, values will pass to another function. We call it as a app. In this add module, these two values will be added up. Okay, if you look at this, uh, this function is just in charge uh, on task, which is add the two values. And later on, the answer or the result from this uh, module is going to pass to another module. Okay, pass to another module, we call it as a multiplication module to perform another task. Okay, in this uh, module, you are going to calculate the, uh, the answer for this result times the rate times the t. The result here is uh, you, you receive from this add module. And then this rate and t are global variables. Okay, understand the requirement first. Okay, and then come up with the possible solutions. Okay, and then try to come up your expected output. Okay, once you are clear about your requirements, and think of possible solutions as well as come up with your expected output the next step is to start to plan your work using this structure chart so this structure chart is basically to show the relationship between these uh, functions okay at this first level it's normally uh, your main functions or the final system that you're going to uh, achieve build up okay in this case i'm going to uh, develop this calculation system so this will be your first level so under this first level, I will have this addition module or addition functions to perform the calculation. Remember the requirements here. Okay, in the main functions, you are going to uh, provide two values, and then you need to pass these two values into this module functions, additions. Okay, in this functions is going to uh, add up the two values. Later on, these two value, uh, this uh, result from this. Uh, functions will pass back to this main functions we call it as a calculation system pass back to this calculation system and then pass the result that you obtain from the addition back to this another function we call it as multiplication functions or due to perform another task okay so as you can see here the structure chart is basically to show the relationship between the functions okay there is another way that you can uh, perform this structure chart where you can actually uh, directly pass the result from this addition module to the multiplication uh, modules. Okay, it will, it will show you the same result, same output. Okay, now you have the overall picture on how this system works. Now, let's move on into more detail about each function. Alright, once you have worked out uh, this uh, structure chart, the next thing that you have to do is to plan the step in each of the function using the flow chart or pseudocode okay so look at this main function first okay always start with the main functions remember in this uh, case you are going to uh, get the value from the user therefore this flow chart here okay this flow chart here is basically referred to the uh, main functions in this main function you are going to read two values from the user and then you are going to pass call these functions okay make sure that you use the correct uh, diagram here refer to the chapter 2 this is the uh, standard uh, diagram 
uh, for a module okay so you are going to call this function add add okay then you are going to pass this number one and number two into these functions okay and this is the flowchart for this addition a module okay so for this one you are not going to put a start okay don't put a start in this entry point you are going to put the name for your functions okay and then put bracket and then this uh, are your uh, parameters receive parameter okay you are going to receive these two parameters from the main functions okay meanwhile in this one add number one number two are the parameters that you are going to pass pass to these functions okay once you pass the number one number two to these functions x1 will be your receive parameters and then your next step calculate the total for this x and y processing therefore you have to use this diagram process x plus y and then you have to display your total okay then you have to use this diagram uh, to display finally you have to return this result to back to this main functions and then we have to call another function multiplication remember look at these questions you have to pass the result from this add module to another function another module we call it as multiplications and then the result that you return from this add will pass to this multiplication you will receive z is the receive parameter you receive from the main function here okay you receive it then you process to, to calculate the result uh, using jack plus uh, multiply by this rate then multiply by this t t and rate are your global variables and then again display the result and then return return to the main functions and then finally end the whole system and the whole program okay so these are the flowchart for each of the module okay so next step you have to write your program based on this c syntax and the flowchart that you plan uh, in the step two okay so this is the template where you have this function declarations then you have this main functions and then you have your uh, user defined functions okay i'm going to show you uh, uh, each of these terms very details in the slide later all right okay now we will move on to this uh, program writing uh, first thing first before you start to write any uh, uh, coding you have to include the directive uh, constant and global variable okay since we have these two uh, global variable here which are the t equal to 2 and the constant which is the rate equal to 3 declare first okay then next you have to declare your functions just like you have a variable you have to declare your variables if you have a user defined function you have to declare the functions also you have you if you have a two user defined function declare all okay in this case we have two functions add and multiplications if you notice we have this bracket okay and we have this int int it means that you have to indicate the data type for your former parameters or the parameters that you are going to receive from another functions you don't need to declare their uh, variable name but you have to declare their data type okay so next one just follow the flowchart here okay we have to start from the main function first then you read number one and number two all right so this number one and number two are your local variables which are the variables that can be accessed within this scope which is main function only all right next once you read the uh, value are uh, number one and number two then you have to call these add functions so you call this add functions okay and this number one and number two we call it as the actual parameters the parameters that you are going to pass to another function okay so we pass this number one and number two to this add functions and this x and y are the variables we call it as a formal parameters it's going to receive okay this 
x is going to receive the value from number 1 and this y is going to receive value from number 2 okay so basically you can just uh, use the same uh, variable name okay but normally I will recommend to use a different name lah. okay and this x and y uh, are basically can be accessed uh, within this group only within this add function only and this number one and number two can be accessed within this uh, main function only okay so uh, in this whole thing here we call it as function definition okay this function definition is basically consists of the function header okay just like the main functions uh, this is your function header so this int add will be your function header since this is a function header therefore no semicolon is required and then you have function body the coding for this function add all right and then just follow the flow chart here you have to read okay receive the arguments from the uh, main functions calculate what is the total value x plus y will be stored into this total and then you return the total can you see the return okay it means that you are going to return this total the total will be in data type integer okay therefore you have to integrate this int in front of your function name this int indicate the uh, data type for your return value okay since your total is your return value and total in in the integer data type therefore you have to indicate this int in front of your function name and then you return this total back to the main functions and then store into this answer therefore your answer will store the total for the two values all right and then follow back this flow chart okay send okay return back to your main functions then you call this multiplication functions okay again another function call means that you are going to pass this answer that you obtained just now to this functions multiplication integer jack and then again this integer, integer uh, jack will be your formal parameter and your answer here is your actual parameter all right again follow this flow chart you have to calculate jack multiply by rate multiply by t the answer will store into this result okay in these functions you are going to calculate the uh, result for this jack multiply by this rate and multiply by this t then you straight away display the uh, result in these functions and there's no uh, value that going to return back to this main functions all right if there is no value that you're going to return back to your main function then you have to integrate this void v o i t in front of your function name okay i repeat if let's say you don't have any value that you're going to return back to your functions then you use void in the previous uh, function add you are going to return something you're going to return this total back to the main function therefore you have to indicate the data type for this total but in this multiplication uh, functions you are not going to return any value back to the functions therefore you put what v o i d okay clear so actually it's pretty simple that you just need to understand the the requirement for your questions uh, identify uh, the modules make sure that each module in charge only a single task all right then you have to plan your work using the structure chart to identify the relationship between the functions and then you have to use the flow chart to uh, plan your work for each of the module then you have to write your program using the c++ syntax and then the structure chart or the flow chart that you have planned just now okay so now uh, we will look into this all this term in more details and some rules that you are going to follow to avoid the errors from happening okay the first one is the functions uh, declarations okay or we call it as a function prototype okay here is the syntax as I mentioned uh, there are three things that you have to take note when declaring a functions which is the return type 
okay, uh, which is the data type lah for your return value. The second one is your function name. Okay, always give a good name to your functions. Make sure it's a uh, meaningful, not too long, not too short. Okay, must follow the rules for the identifier in the chapter two that I mentioned. Okay, and then finally your arguments, your parameters. Okay, if you have nothing to pass to the another uh, uh, function, you just leave it blank. Okay, function call means that you're going to call a function. So you have to put the list of your parameters inside the bracket. Okay, we have three different types. For instance, the first one, you're going to pass the x and y into this addition modules. You have a, a list of arguments x and y. But somehow, in some occasions, you don't have the argument to pass to. Okay, normally we use this kind of function to display to just to perform the display on another functions and the third one is going to uh, pass this mark okay you're going to pass the, some arguments to another functions to perform some calculations and then you return back to these functions and then you're going to store the result that you obtained earlier into the variable for instance like here is the grade Okay, variable scope, we have two types of uh, variable scope, local variable and global variables. In global, uh, in a local variable, it's going to declare within a function body. It cannot be accessed by other functions. Alright, and then we have a global variable is declared outside of any functions. And it can be accessed by all the functions within the program. Okay, just like this, remember the code that I showed you just now. If let's say you have a variables or the constant that declare within this uh, scope here, okay, within these uh, functions, we call it as a local variables. And this number one and number two can be accessed by this function only. And then this total can be accessed within this addition module only. Alright, and meanwhile we have another global variable where you declare outside all these functions. Means that this array t can be Assessed by all these functions. Okay, up to now you have learned how to declare a function and how to use them. Okay, here I'm going to show you some rules that you have to follow while you're using all these functions. Firstly, function definitions cannot be nested. Unlike for loop, you, have, you can have a nested for loop, right? For inside another for loop. But in function, you cannot have the nested functions. They must be independent placed separately just like the example in the left hand side okay if you uh, put this function inside the main function here as so in the right hand side it will throw you the errors okay and the second one the four or the formal parameters or the function parameters is same scope as the local variables okay this uh, integer x and y all right this integer x and y and the total okay integer x y total are actually local variables and accessible by this particular function only okay and the third one the scope for this global variable or constant extends from its declaration to the end of the program it means that this global variable uh, t is accessible by all the functions but however you have to declare before the use if you declare this uh, integer t equal to 2 after the use then it will throw you the error all right so just like this you, you have this uh, you declare this rate after the, the use then it will throw you the errors you cannot detect what is the value for rate okay rules number four the scope of this uh, local variable extend from a declaration to the end of the block uh, although it is uh, in a nested block okay you look at this total okay so this total is actually is a local variable, it's accessible but within this uh, nested block here. Okay, the last rule here is uh, identifier does not include any nested block that contains a locally declared identifier with the same name. Okay, which means that if they are same name for the variables or the constant, then local variable will be used first. If you look at this example, you have break equal to 3, t equal to 2. In this main functions, okay, it will use the global variables, global variable rate and uh, global uh, constant rate and this uh, constant variable t equal to 2. But you look at these multiplications, okay, if you have declared another t here equal to 4, okay, 
you have another global variable t same name equal to 2 it will use the local t and the rate local uh, rate here 4 and 6 instead using this global uh, variable now come to our very important topic here which is a type of functions with parameters in the function just now, I have shown you how to pass a value from one function to another. And then we perform the calculation. Then we return back the value to the main functions. Okay. In fact, we have three uh, different methods of passing these parameters to uh, from one function to another. The first one is passed by value. The second one is passed by reference. And the third one is passed by address. Okay. Come to this first technique first. Okay. Pass by value. This pass by value is basically a copy of the data. Okay, and then place in a local variable in the call functions. Regardless of how the data are manipulated and changed in the call function, the original data in this calling function are saved and remain unchanged. And this is the preferred passing technique because it protects the data. Okay, look at this example. You have a main functions, then you request the user to change two values, number one and number two. And then, this memory occasions uh, will uh, reserve two places for this number one and number two. And these two uh, variables are having different memory location, 0001 and 0002. Okay, let's say the user key in 10 for number one and 5 for number two. Now, they pass the two values to this uh, ad ad uh, addition uh, module X and Y. Okay, since you are declaring this x and y, therefore, another uh, memory equation will be reserved for this x and y. Alright, and this number 1, 10 will pass to this x, and this uh, number 2, 5 will pass to this y. Okay, notice that all of, all of them uh, have, are having this different memory location. Okay, then you perform the calculation in the addition module, s equal to x plus y. So, you have updated the value for this x to 15. Since they are having a different memory locations, therefore any changes in this uh, function here, okay, does not actually does not affect the value in the uh, main functions because they are having different memory locations. All right. So there are two features that are important for this pass by value. The first one is you can only return one value back to your main functions. Okay, only one value. Okay. The second feature here is the values for the variable in the call function okay, does not affect the original value in the calling function. Okay. But under certain situations, you would like to pass more than one value, for instance 2 or 3, or even more values back to the calling function. Then this pass by value is not uh, able to do that. Okay. Also, under certain situations, you would like to update the value in the calling function immediately when some calculation is performed in the call function. In that case, you have to use the technique that I'm going to show you uh, right now, which are pass by reference and pass by address. Both techniques will give you the same output or result, but just the way uh, that to declare them is a bit different. Okay, but. Uh, before we go into these two subtopics, uh, please make sure that you have fully understand what are reference variable and pointer variable first and how to declare them. Now look at this pass by reference first. The main purpose here is to update the value of actual parameters in calling function when there is some changes in the call functions. Okay, it means that anything changed in the and this reference variable which located in the call functions will automatically change the value in the actual parameter also where this actual parameter is placing in this calling function all right now uh, we will look at how to declare this reference variable in the function okay the first one you have to put this uh, your name as user, your return uh, data type, and then your uh, function name, and then you have, put, you have to put this uh, data type and persons. Okay, this is the syntax to declare a, a reference variables. Please refer to chapter 
chapter 8 if you have forgotten okay now look at this uh, main function we have two value as user enter these two integer number one and number two okay again if you have these two value then this uh, uh, memory location here will be reserved to store these two variable uh, 001 and 0002 and let's say the user key in the value of 10 for number 1 and value of 15 for number 2 and then now you pass to this reference variables okay bear in mind this is reference variables this is not normal variable okay when you pass this value to this uh, reference variable this is how it looks like okay basically this x is the reference uh, to this number 1 and then this y is the reference to this number 2 Okay, this lepon uh, variables just like a reference, a liars, or just an alternate name to this existing variable. Okay, if you notice the memory location here are the same, means that whatever change in the value in this uh, call functions, okay, it will reflect in the actual argument also. Alright, since they are having the same address, therefore the value also be the same. Okay, so when you pass the arguments to this call functions, you basically duplicate exactly the same address and exactly the same value to this call functions. Alright, now you perform the calculation x equal to x plus y. You let's say that you, you use a key 10 for x, right? So you update the value become 15. Then you update this uh, value of y become 25. Okay, now look at this very important here. Since they are having the same address, Okay, 0001 and this 0001 also anything that change any of this value uh, change in this uh, call functions will automatically change the value in the actual argument also because they are having the same address okay so the advantage uh, by using this method is you don't need to actually pass back the value like uh, the technique just not pass by value you have to return the value then you can only return one value but in this technique you can return more than one value okay you can update the uh, this value uh, simultaneously okay in the pass by value you can only pass by the single value this is the very important note here you must know how to declare the reference variables and the syntax of declaring this uh, reference variables we have another method that also have the same effect of this pass by reference both serve the same purpose we call it as pass by address using these pointer variables again before you before we go into this subtopic uh, make sure that you have watched my previous lesson lesson 8 be, uh, about how to declare a pointer variable first and then how to retrieve the content uh, uh, using this address okay so again uh, using this same example Okay, we have this function declarations so same return data type and then your function name and then this is your pointer this is how you declare a pointer you have to put this data type and then a star here followed by the star this is a pointer and then we ask the user to key in two values okay number one and number two and then you have these two number one and number two having the different address 0001 and 0002 Okay, now we pass okay in this case we are not passing the value we are actually passing the address we are passing the address to this pointer means that this x is actually pointer and point to this address of variable number one and then this y is a pointer and this pointer is pointing to the address for number two they are storing the address okay look at this value value for this x is actually storing the address for this number one and then this pointer y is basically storing the address for number two okay now how to retrieve the content to retrieve a content you have to add this star in front of the variable name in front of this uh, pointer okay so you x equal to x plus five so you will update the content for 15 okay to 15 and then y you update the content for this uh, y to 25 again since that 
they are holding the same uh, address okay 0001 0001 and 002 0002 any changes in this call functions will basically reflect change automatically in your actual arguments in your calling function okay actually they are safe the same purpose as this uh, pass by reference the advantage is uh, you don't need to pass uh, you can pass back more than one value compared to like pass by value you can only pass a single value in pass by value but in this pass by reference and pass by address you can pass back more than two value more than one value to the to your main function okay also you can actually immediately change the value from this uh, call function to the calling function okay now come to our last part in this functions we call it as a function overloading in C++ two functions that defined by the user can be the same name we call it as function overloading you can do that however you have to fulfill some certain conditions there are two conditions here the first one you must have different number of parameters okay you must have different numbers of parameters or if you have a same number of parameters then the parameters data type must be in different orders okay look at this example you have the same function name okay but make sure that the number of parameter is different okay you have the same TSD function name but the number of parameter here is different the first one you have only a but the second function you have a and b okay but uh, in this function overloading uh, we don't care about the return data type okay although you have this int int same it doesn't matter okay as long as the the number of parameter here is different is valid okay here is the a bad example you have the same name and then the same uh, number of uh, arguments okay if let's say you have same number of parameter then make sure the data type here are in different order for example a equal to double b equal to integer then in the second uh, function you have a in the integer b in the double is valid and maybe this is the bad example you have the same function name and exactly same uh, uh, number of uh, parameters as well as this data type okay so just like uh, you and your friend are having the exactly same uh, phone number same color same casing you put on the table okay definitely you will have a chance to take uh, to take wrong right you don't know which one is yours one same like that in the programming compiler don't know which function that you are referring to since you have uh, this exactly same function name and the same parameter list and also the same data type okay so that's all for this uh, lessons I hope uh, that you are learning something new about this uh, user defined functions I hope that you are clear uh, when to use this pass by value uh, or when to use the pass by reference and pass by address then I will see you in the next lesson okay bye